the forces working upon life upon this planet varies from one latitude to another. Because of a certain shape and a form it takes, it could become differently competent. It is because of this that, uh, you know, being in contact with the earth is a very important part of one's health and well-being. I know the medical community would uh, make fun of this, but I hundred percent stand by this. The question is, uh, being in a certain part of the planet, does the celestial geometry work upon you in a particular way? The nature of the larger human system or the deeper human system, how it functions, definitely is uh, impacted by the location. It makes them different. As you know, with... it is true with every other life. The plant life and the animal life, which is very comfortable in southern India, would... Uh, will... would wither away in uh, anywhere around uh, New York State or in that part of the world. Because the life here has evolved, it's not just the weather. It's not just the weather and the volume of sunlight or cold that happens. Yes, those are uh, a big impact too. But why life has evolved the way it has evolved has something to do with the location. It is a fact, anthropologically recognized fact, that a certain race of people, when they migrated from one geographic uh, location to an entirely different geographic location, many racial features in their physiology will slowly change. And over a period of time, there is a distinct change to a point where you could not recognize how they were at a certain time. For example, India has been a cauldron of uh, racial mix for a long time. But you will see how being at this location on the planet, of course, the temperatures, the weather, all these things have an influence, but apart from that, just the nature of the food that they eat, nature of how the... what planetary position they are, how it has altered their physical features and how they've completely changed is quite unbelievable. It is Central Asian people who came down as the Aryans about eight thousand years ago. Just see how people in Georgia, I'm not talking about uh, uh, United States Georgia, I'm talking about <laughs> the Georgia, Georgia, okay? <laughs> in Central Asia, how those people look and how people who have come from there, who lived in India for over six to eight thousand years, how they look, you will be amazed how they have changed. Everything about them has changed. So there is weather, there is food, there is latitude, which makes the difference. Because the speed at which the planet is spinning has different effect of centrifugal and centripetal forces working upon every object upon the planet, the forces working upon life upon this planet varies from one latitude to another. 
So based on this, the impact upon how the body shapes itself and because of that, because of a certain shape and a form it takes, it could become differently competent. It's unfortunate that every difference, certain human beings turn it into a discriminatory process. Otherwise, if you study the differences that the planet has produced, different types of life forms that it has produced, even diff different types of human beings that the planet has produced, it's amazing and incredible and there is a whole lot of things to know about this. And uh, India's latitude and longitude largely makes them inward focused than outward. This does not mean others cannot do this, everybody can do this. There is also a cultural evolution that happens over a period of time, there are many factors. But definitely, being in different parts of the world, the body becomes competent. It's not like if you move from one place to another, now in next two years' time everything about you will change, need not, unless you're willing to change. You could resist that, but changes will happen in spite of your resistance even in your own lifetime just because geographically you're located in a completely different space. It's very difficult to gauge this because the amount of cultural influence and other social influences are so big and so intertwined that you cannot really separate this. But suppose we had looked at a world before the migration started, before we started traveling as we are traveling today, you can clearly see the distinction as to how planet generated a certain type of life in a certain part of the world. This is true with every other life and definitely with the human being too. You also, I think, interjected with uh, a question about the food. I must tell you this, in yoga the prescription for eating the food is uh, how much distance a man can walk in a day. In a single day, how much distance you can walk, that should be the radius of the area from which you must eat. You should not eat food which is grown far away from you because the body that you carry is essentially a piece of this planet. If it is a piece of this planet, if you're eating food from that specific area and you're living on that area, there is a constant interaction between your body. Don't think this happens only after you, after, uh, you find your cemetery spot. Even today, as you are sitting here, if you sit in this place, your body and the earth or this… this part of the earth on which you're sitting, is in a constant state of a very profound interaction. It is because of this that, uh, you know, being in contact with the earth is a very important part of one's health and well-being. In… Uh, in the yoga center, we are always giving people to work in the garden if they are not healthy, so that they are in touch with the earth. This being in touch with the earth, today in modern spas has reduced itself to a mud bath. Well, you must be in touch somehow. It doesn't matter how you do it, either with a mud bath or by working in the land, whichever way, or sleeping on the floor or whatever you do, essentially you're trying to be in contact. And food is a transaction. What was in the earth, you're taking it into the body. It will function best if it comes from that piece or that area of earth on which you're living. So generally the prescription is like this, how much you can walk in a day, that should be the radius of land from which you eat. That is, if you are growing food on your own farm and eating, you will see within a month's time,
Suppose you live on a patch of land, grow your own food and eat, within a month's time you will see a distinct, a very distinct change in the healthfulness of your body. I would say, if this one thing, this one simple thing is done, I think we can bring down the incidence of cancer on this planet by fifty to sixty percent. I would stand by this. I know the medical community would uh, make fun of this, but I hundred percent stand by this. At least fifty percent of the incidence of cancer could be brought down if we are in touch with the earth that we are living upon and the food comes from the area in which you live, not from somewhere else. Right now, if I go for breakfast in this hotel, probably the fruit comes from New Zealand. They told me the fish comes from Vietnam and I don't know what else come from where <laughs> So, just because we are able to transport things around and there are supermarkets which can sell the world to you, we are doing this more for pleasure, not for well-being. <laughs>